My name is Fritz Yanyasu. Uh, by now you have uh, seen me in a number of uh, videos. Today we're talking about lab number two. Two. We are focused on two um, compounds. Malic acid and fumaric acid. Let me start with uh, fumaric. Here it is. C4H4O4. Love that sound. 444. There is a double bond here in the middle of the carbon chain. Okay? A double bond. As in, uh, you can see here, the rotation around the double bond just won't go because it's a double bond. And so you would have built this molecular model of uh, fumaric acid in the lab. How do you do that? Well, here. For the double bond, use the long ones. See the long ones and short ones. The long ones are a little thinner and so you can bend them a little. The short ones just won't bend. So you'd have used the long ones for the double bond here, that C or double bond there, that C or double bond, and then the short ones elsewhere. So double bond, no rotation. Single bond, sitting like rotation, right? And so that's an important part of the exercise. <clears throat> so the first part that I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm making an Excel template for this is describe this bond and why it doesn't rotate, theoretically. Remember the SP2 kind of hybridization? in the p orbitals and how they overlap and so on. Anyway, you can look it up actually in your textbook. So I certainly want you to review that. And so we'll ask you to name uh, uh, the types of bonds that they are, there are actually two in our case, and then which one that restricts the uh, rotation across the double bond. So that will be uh, one exercise. Let me pull up, uh, this I said was fumaric. And up here is our friend Malaik. So this is cis, meaning that either the two hydrogens or the two COOH are on one side. One side is opposed to opposite. Now what we'd like to do is to um, consider intra and inter molecular bonding in this case hydrogen bonding well in terms of hydrogen bonding it's the o's here and the oh here that can hydrogen bond and so all we have to do is rotate it and see where we get a favorable interaction if you do this it's like mm, yeah that crashes remember uh, delta minus, delta plus, the polarization of the bond, minus, minus, that's it. And so in a system like this, it avoids that scenario and tries to achieve a scenario where there is attraction. The attraction is stabilizing. Attraction is a good thing in life. <laughs> anyway, as opposed to repulsion. So here, <coughs> there'll be a, a delta minus here from this bond. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. And so delta, mi uh, delta plus, delta minus, that's a hydrogen bond. So you can then look at this and say, ooh, my leg can what? Can intra with an A. Take back my good friend. Fumaric, trans, and so you can rotate these as much as you want. You never get these groups here to get close enough to attract. So one of these can do intra and the other one cannot. What are the implications of that? Well, let's consider 
first intermolecular hydrogen bonding. If I take another fumaric here, molecule, because I want to consider interaction between the molecules, I could do this and say, well, how would these interact most favorably? I could do this and say, mm -mm, mm -mm, doesn't work. How about this? Ah. Hydrogen bond there, hydrogen bond here. So very favorable inter with an E. And so you can imagine kind of a chain thing here forming because this can continue this way and you can do it the other way too. So very favorable inter with an E. Go back to my friend uh, Malik Acid. Now, Malik Acid kind of does the, eh, okay, well, kind of same thing. The intra kind of interacts with itself. And then you will find in general that uh, as you try and consider the possibilities of uh, uh, any kind of bonding beyond that, it doesn't work very well. Um, just doesn't work very well. Um, if you try this, it's uh, not as favorable. It's not as favorable because in this case, you are assigning this oxygen to do two hydrogen bonds, and so it's not as favorable as, uh, as one. And if you just consider possibilities for strong inter, it's not as much. So we come to this conclusion then. The covalent bonding is the same. Covalent bonding is the actual bonds. So consider those to be the same. So if there are any differences, it's the inter and intra. And from analysis of the structures here, we can say which one forms more overall bonding, whether it's covalent, covalent plus hydrogen bonding plus dispersion force, what if it is? Kind of sum those all up and say which does bond. The one that does more must be uh, the one that is of lower energy. So in, in this lab, um, we provide two values. One is for fumaric and the other is from a lake. And the values are minus 812 kilojoules per mole and minus 791 kilojoules per mole, and that is for the enthalpy of formation. Which is which? So let's look at this. If you can, here are the elements in the enth standard enthalpy of formation equation that I described yesterday. And what we want to do is consider I and consider I, okay, and B. What's I and what's B? Depending on which you think, because that's the standard and standard enthalpy of formation, where you then form the C4H4 or for solid. Remember that equation. All right, so we start here. It's exothermic, so the internal energy goes down to here and here. Which one is this? This is bigger than that. So which one then belongs to? Which substance? Which one belongs to which substance? So at this point, we have formed uh, C4H4O4 here. 
It's either Malaik or Fiumare, those two locations. <coughs> Let's now consider the enthalpy of sublimation. Solid to gas, direct conversion, solid to gas. Now you'll note that these two levels here, this is the gaseous form, gaseous form, are placed at the same level. Why? Remember the gaseous phase. Generally considered there are no intermolecular forces in the gaseous phase. And it turns out that the rotation in the gaseous phase of these boards, rotations are so rapid that there isn't any meaningful intra or inter. All those forces are gone. And therefore these are places same. So, does this K belong to fumaric acid or malic acid? Does this F belong to fumaric acid or malic acid? All right. Now, one more thing. Let's consider combustion. Combustion, in this case, reaction with oxygen gas forming CO2 in the H2O liquid. Point is, the products here are the same. CO2 plus H2O liquid gas. The products for either one of them is the same. So therefore we must put them at the same level. Ah. Now, maybe this can explain why this gap is lower than that gap and how all of these differences arise from the enthalpy of formation and can be explained by consideration of inter I mean, covalent bonds of course that are identical and inter and intra So that's the gist of uh, 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 what uh, uh, you would have been doing in lab, and of course you'd have completed that table. But this is this is the central thesis of it. So what remains now is uh, um, the lab part. So this theory part, I'm sitting in my office, of course, uh, um, with my head here. Here. Now, so no need for goggles. But we're now going to lab in. So in that case, just as I specified in the pre-lab, we'll have two uh, uh, compounds labeled A and B. Our, uh, and uh, uh, the two of them are either, either malic or fumaric. Can you identify which is which? So based on the reasoning here, and based on the fact that when it comes to melting point, it's the intermolecular forces that count. The stronger the inter, the higher will be the melting point. And so we have a melting point apparatus that we're going to go and look at and uh, show how you would have operated it had you been around. All right, so we'll uh, uh, call this kind of uh, lab two, video one. And then when we go to lab, we'll make lab two video two. See you later, my